Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim This is part 15 of Tafsir al-Sa'di A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim Afa tatma'una an yu'minu lakum wa qad kana fariqun minhum yasma'una kalam Allah thumma yuhrifunahu min ba'di ma 'aqaluhu wa hum ya'lamun Do you O oh believers then hope that they will respond to your call when a party among them used to hear the word of Allah and they distorted it knowingly after having understood it. وَإِذَا لَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا وَإِذَا خَلَى بَعْضُهُمْ إِلَى بَعْضٍ قَالُوا أَتُحَدِّثُونَهُمْ بِمَا فَتَحَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ لِيُحَادُّوكُمْ لِيُحَادُّوكُمْ بِهِ عِنْدَ رَبِّكُمْ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ When they meet the believers, they say, we to believe. But when they meet one another in private, they say, why are you telling them what Allah has disclosed to you of the description of the Prophet ﷺ in the Torah? that they may use it in argument against you before your Lord. Have you no sense? أَوَلَا يَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا يُسِرُّونَ وَمَا يُعْلِنُونَ Do they not realize that Allah knows what they conceal and what they disclose? وَمِنْهُمْ أُمِّيُّونَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ الْكِتَابَ إِلَّا أَمَانِيَّ وَإِنْهُمْ إِلَّا يَظُنُّونَ and there are among them unlettered people who have no knowledge of the book except wishful thinking and they have nothing but mere speculation. These verses put an end to the believer's hopes that the people of the book would believe. In other words, do not raise your hopes about them becoming believers because the way they are does not give rise to any such hope. They used to distort the words of Allah after having learned and understood them. They interpreted them in a way different than what Allah intended in order to give people the impression that it came from Allah when it did not come from Allah. If this is how they are with regard to their own book, which they regard as a source of great pride and honor, and as the basis of their religion, Yet they took it as a means to turn people away from the path of Allah. Then how can it be hoped that they would believe and respond to your call? This is highly unlikely. Then Allah describes the condition of the hypocrites among the people of the book. وَإِذَا لَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا When they meet the believers, they say, we too believe. They pretend to be believers and they paid lip service to a faith that was not in their hearts. But when they meet one another in private and no one else is pre present, and no one else is present other than their co religionists, they say to one another, why are you telling them what Allah has disclosed to you of the description of the Prophet ﷺ in the Torah? That is, why do you pretend to believe and tell them that you are like them when that will be proof for them against you? When that will be proof for them against you because they will say they affirm that they, they affirm that what we are following is truth and what they are following is falsehood thus they the disbelievers thus they the believers will use that against you before your lord have you no sense that is do you not have the sense to stop doing that which may be used against you this is what they say to one another أَوَلَا يَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا يُسِرُّونَ وَمَا يُعْلِنُونَ Do they not realize that Allah knows what they conceal and what they disclose? So even though they concealed what they believed and kept it to themselves, 
and thought that by and thought that that and thought that by being discreet they would be able to avoid giving the believers any argument to use against them they were wrong and very ignorant for allah knew what they concealed and what they disclosed so he exposed their true nature to his slaves وَمِنْهُمْ And there are among them, that is among the people of the book, أُمِّيُّونَ Unlettered people, that is common folk, who are not knowledgeable. لَا يَعْلَمُونَ الْكِتَابَ إِلَّا آمَانِي Who have no knowledge of the book except wishful thinking. That is, they have no share of the book of Allah except recitation that they hear. They know nothing about what the early generations had of true knowledge of it. All these people have is some speculative ideas and they blindly follow the scholars among them. In these verses, Allah mentions their scholars. In these verses, Allah mentions their scholars, common folk, hypocrites, and those among them who were not hypocrites. The scholars among them were, adhe were adhering to their faults and misguided religion and the common folk were blindly following them with no insight. So there is no hope that either of the two groups would believe in your message. فَوَيْلٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِأَيْدِيهِمْ ثُمَّ يَقُولُونَ هَذَا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ لِيَشْتَرُوا بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا فَوَيْلٌ لَهُمْ مِمَّا كَتَبَتْ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَوَيْلٌ لَهُمْ مِمَّا يَكْسِبُونَ then woe to those who write the scripture with their own hands and then say, this is from Allah, in order to trade it for a small price. Woe to them for what their hands have written and woe to them for what they have earned thereby. Here Allah is warning that those who distort the scriptures and say of the distortion and what they write, this is from Allah. In fact, this is propagating falsehood and concealing truth but they did not but they did that knowingly in order to trade for it a small price all of this world from beginning to end is a small price they made their falsehood a means of snatching what is in people's hands thus they wronged the people on two accounts they confused them with regards to their religion and they took their wealth unlawfully by the worst of means which is worse than those who take people's wealth by force or by stealing and so on hence allah warned them about these two things and said woe to them for what their hands have written of distortion and falsehood and woe to them for what they have earned thereby of wealth what is meant by woe is severe punishment and loss. This is a stern warning indeed. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said when discussing this passage, Do you, O believers, then hope for what they have earned thereby? Do you, O believers, hope till for what they have earned hereby? He says, Allah condemned those who distorted words and this, include, and this includes those who explain or teach the Qur'an and Sunnah on the basis of innovation, bid'ah. He also condemned those who have knowledge of the book. He also condemned those who have no knowledge of the book except wishful thinking. This applies to those who do not ponder the meanings of the Qur'an and know nothing of it except mere recitation of its letters. It also applies to those who write anything with their hands that is contrary to the book of Allah for the purpose of worldly gain, such as saying that this is from Allah, or this is Islam, or this is what the Quran and Sunnah say, or this is the understanding of the early generations and leading scholars, or this is one of the basic matters of religion, that every individual and the entire ummah must believe. It also applies to those who conceal what they know of the Quran and Sunnah so that the one who differs from him concerning the truth will not use his words as evidence against him. 
these are matters that are very common among the followers of whims and desires in general, such as the Rafidis, and also among many of who claim to be scholars. Rafidis, Rafidis are the extremist Shia who believe that Ali radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him, should have been the caliph, should have been the caliph after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam died in accordance with his instructions as they claim. And they believe that the Sahaba went against the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam instructions by appointing Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu as caliph. For this reason, the Rafidis bear resentment towards the Sahaba, whilst on the other hand, going to such extremes in their love for Ali radiallahu anhu and his descendants, that some of them elevated them to the level of divinity. These Shia groups include Ithna Ashriyas and Ismailis. These Shia groups include the Isna Ashriyas and Ismailis. وَقَالُوا لَن تَمَسَّنَ النَّارُ إِلَّا أَيَّامًا مَعْدُودًا قُلْ أَتَّخَذْتُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَهْدًا فَلَنْ يُخْلِفَ اللَّهُ عَهْدًا أَمْ تَقُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ بلا من كسب سيئة وأحاطت به خطيئته فأولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات أولئك أصحاب الجنة هم فيها خالدون And they say, the fire will only touch us for a few days. Say, have you received a covenant from Allah? For Allah will never break his covenant? Or are you saying about Allah things of which you have no real knowledge? Nay, those who do evil and are encompassed by their sin will be the inhabitants of the fire. They will abide therein forever. But those who believe and do righteous deeds will be the inhabitants of paradise. They will abide therein forever. Allah mentions their abhorrent actions, then states that despite that they praise themselves, and are certain that they will be saved from the punishment of Allah and will be granted his reward and that the fire will only touch them for a few days which are so few that they may be counted on the fingers thus they combined evil doing with the feeling that they would be saved from the consequences thereof because this was no more than a mere claim Allah refuted them by saying Say to them, O Messenger, Have you received a covenant from Allah whereby you have pledged to believe in Him and in His Messenger and to obey Him? This is the covenant that would lead to salvation, a covenant that cannot be changed or altered. Or are you saying among, or are you saying about Allah things of which you have no real knowledge? أَمْ تَقُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them that the truth of their claim is connected to one of these two matters and there is no third option. Either they have a covenant from Allah in which case their claim is true or they are saying something unfounded about Allah in which case their claim is false. This exposes them to greater disgrace and a more severe punishment. It is known from their situation that they have no covenant from Allah because they rejected many of the prophets to the extent that they killed a number of them because of their refusal to obey Allah and their breaking of covenants. There is only one possibility, which is that they are fabricators and liars who say about Allah what they do not know. And speaking of Allah without knowledge is one of the gravest and most abhorrent of forbidden actions then Allah outlines then out then Allah outlines a general ruling that is applicable to all including the children of Israel and other and others including the children of Israel and others this is the ruling and there is no other there is no room for their wishful thinking and their claims 
as to who will be doomed and who will be saved. Allah says, nay. Allah says, nay, the matter is not as you say, for your claim is unfounded. Rather, those who do evil, this may include shirk, association of others with Allah, and lesser sins. But what is meant here is shirk, based on the fact that Allah then says, are and are encompassed by their sin. What is meant is that it encompasses the one who does it, leaving no way out. This is only applicable in the case of shirk because the one who believes cannot be encompassed by his sin. Will be the inhabitants of the fire. They will abide therein forever. The Kharijites quote this verse as evidence that anyone who commits sin becomes a disbeliever. Kharijites. The Kharijites are an extremist group who were former members, members of Ali's army who rebelled against Ali after he accepted arbitration. They held extreme views that led them to regard the majority of Muslims as disbelievers. The Kharijites quote this verse as evidence that anyone who commits sin becomes a disbeliever. But this is proof against them, as you may see, because it clearly refers to shirk. This is the case with every follower of falsehood who quotes a verse or sahih hadith, authentic hadith, to support his false notion. What he quotes as evidence will inevitably contain evidence against him. But those who believe in Allah, his angels, his books, his messengers, and the last day, and do righteous deeds, deeds cannot be righteous unless they meet two conditions. They should be done sincerely for the sake of Allah and in accordance with the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To sum up the meaning of these two verses, those who will attain salvation and victory are those who believe, are those who believe and do righteous deeds. Those who will be doomed to hell are those who associate, who associate others with Allah and disbelieve in him.